Hey everybody, I am Actors, and welcome back to the only channel on YouTube that covers in-depth videos of cars and sneakers. Kicking it back to cars, and let's be honest, cars is a lot more of an expensive hobby than sneakers. But don't you worry, because I found a list of amazing sports cars you can find for under three grand. Perfect! You should use this list for yourself. Why, too, Gucci? Because you're broke. Yo, stop talking, Gucci. You don't even have a car. Uh, no. Why buy a car when I can just steal yours? Oh my god, I knew the mileage was off. That reminds me. I'm gonna go steal it again so I can buy some more espresso. Jesus Christ, just don't drive crazy. No promises. Okay, I'll deal with that later, but let's get started with this list of the five best sports cars you can find under three grand. Be sure if you're enjoying the content so far to like and share this video as well as hit that subscribe button. It would really help out a lot. We're really close to being monetized and trust me when we do get monetized, we're going to be seeing a lot more content. Alright, so our first car on this list is of course the Mazda Miata. I just thought I just had to get this car out of the way because every cheap car list you see has to include this car. Why? Because Miata is always the answer. I mean, it really is just a really great car. We're talking about the generation years from 1990 to 1995 that you can find for under three grand. This car is rear wheel drive with a five to six speed manual transmission, depending on which car you get. There is an automatic transmission version, but don't get that. Don't get that. There's two engine types when it comes to this car. There's the 1.8 liter and the 1.6 liter version. Both are inline fours. These engines don't make a lot of horsepower. You can get between a 110 to 128, depending which engine type you have, which does seem a little bit slow, but do mind you that this car weighs like less than 2,700 pounds. So it is extremely light and handling is amazing on this car. Absolutely insane, actually. Now the downside of this car is of course the numbers on the paper, which is a 0 to 60 time around 8 seconds and a top speed of 127 miles. But please don't let those numbers fool you, this car feels absolutely a lot quicker. And this car is quicker on a track than most cars you wouldn't expect. While being aged and styling just a little bit, it still kind of holds up in my book because just look how cute this car looks with pop up headlights. I mean how could you be sad if you have this car? I found a really decent example on Facebook Marketplace going for $1,200 right now. It does have a little bit of miles on it, but don't you worry because Miatas tend to last over 200,000 miles easily, sometimes reaching up to 300,000 miles. Overall, the Mazda Miata is never a bad buy. Our next car on the list is the Pontiac Grand Prix GTP. This is an American-made sedan or coupe, depending on which model you get, from 1997 to 2008. This car has two engine options, which is a 3.8 naturally aspirated V6 model. And then there's the GTP, which takes this engine and throws a supercharger on it. The horsepower range can range from 195 horsepower to 240 horsepower, depending on which year you get and whether you get the supercharged version. Now some downsides to this course is probably be the top speed, it only does 128 miles per hour, not that far off from the Mazda Miata and this car is front wheel drive. Now don't let that discourage you, while the handling may be eh, this car is actually pretty fast in a straight line. This car can do a 0-6 to six at around 6.6 .6 or 6.8 seconds, slower if you do not have the supercharged version, and the quarter mile time is 15 seconds flat. Another downside of this car would of course be the automatic transition. While the engine reliability is great, I had been hearing some issues about the transmission, and it's not that really quick to shift. Some people don't really like the style in this car since it's kind of awkward. Me, I kind of like it. It's really wide, bulky, and aggressive. I managed to find a pretty decent model on cars.com going for $2,500 right now. Once again, this thing has quite a bit of miles on it, but don't you worry, I've seen this car go over 300,000 miles before. So if you're looking for the poor man's Hellcat, the Pontiac Grand Prix GTP may not be a bad buy. <laughs> Next we have the Audi TT. This is a really pretty roadster that came all the way from Germany and we're talking about the 2002 to 2006 model year. Now this engine has a 1.6 liter 4 cylinder turbo and it's making around 180 to 222 horsepower depending on which version you get. 
Now there's two kinds of versions of this car. There's one which is a front wheel drive version of the car, which is the one you probably most likely to find for the price. And there is an all wheel drive version. Now some of them do come in automatic, but skip that, get the man. Zero to 60 happens around 6.3 to around seven seconds, depending on which model year you get. And the top speed around 143 miles per hour. Pretty great sports car so far. This thing also boats pretty great handling as well. Not quite as sharp as the Mazda Miata, but you will be outpacing muscle cars on the track. The reliability of this car seems to be pretty fair, but do note that this is a luxury car and when things break, things are expensive. But something that will probably overthrow that for you is the styling. Now this car was absolutely gorgeous when it came out and it's starting to age just a little bit but I still think the curves still hold up today. I managed to find a pretty a decent example of an Audi TT on car grooves. It has about 104,000 miles on it but trust me this thing is not even halfway through its lifespan. So I find examples of this car over 200,000 miles all day long. Overall the Audi TT is often referred to as a luxury Miata and rightfully so. It's Pretty fun car for the money. Our fourth option on this list, it's a pretty cool one, is the Mitsubishi Eclipse. Everybody of course knows this car from the Fast and Furious movie, as it was a hero car from Fast and Furious 1 and Fast and Furious 2. And we're going to talk about two generation years for this car, which spans from 1995 to 2005. Now for the older cars, you're going to want to get the GST or the GSX models, because those have the 4G63 engine in it. What is that? It's the freaking four cylinder turbo engine from the Evo. That's pretty badass. And for the later model years, you're gonna to want to look for the GT models because that has the V6 in it. Both engines are making around 210 horsepower. That might not seem a lot, but this car can do 0 to 60 in around 6.7 seconds. Now, if you want the all wheel drive model, you're gonna want the GSX model. Now, if you don't find that, and you probably won't because those are really hard to find, you're probably going to be looking at the front wheel drive cars. Don't worry about too much because I heard handling on these cars is pretty okay, as well as straight light and speed. Of course, you're going to want the manual transmission for this car if you want the most fun out of it. And also, the top speed of this car is around 140 miles per hour. Styling wise, I do think that the older cars look better. They have definitely aged a lot better and kind of look like a Supra in certain angles. I managed to find a pretty decent example on Facebook Marketplace of a Mitsubishi Eclipse GT. It's going for about $2,400 right now with only 147,000 miles on it. Not to worry too much because it's Japanese and the reliability is pretty decent. I would advise you to try to find the older model years since you can find them in the price range, but they are getting a little bit harder to find. Overall, the Mitsubishi Eclipse is not bad if you're looking for a car with a little bit of movie fame. <laughs> And for the final entry on this list, we have the Ford Mustang GT. This of course is the iconic muscle car from America, and we're going to be talking about the 1996 to 2004 model years. This car can crank up between 115 to 260 horsepower from its 4.6 liter V8, sends it straight to the rear wheels. It can do 0 to 60 or around 6 seconds with a top speed of 150 miles per hour. Handling is pretty decent for this car, but it is quite heavy so it has a lot of body roll, but don't you worry because it makes up for it in straight line speed. This car has a quarter mile time of around 14.6 seconds. You can get this car in either an automatic or manual. I of course would recommend the manual, but those are pretty hard to find in the price range so the automatic is not too bad either. And the reliability of this car is known to be pretty damn great, since that big old V8 can actually take a massive beating. I mean, for the styling car, I mean, it's pretty decent. I mean, it's okay. It has aged quite a bit since it's an older 90s and early 2000s car. And the newer Mustangs with the retro styling just look a lot better. But don't you worry about the styling, because I managed to find a pretty cool looking Mustang GT on Facebook Marketplace for around $2,400, and it's got a V8 and a manual transmission. And what else can I say about the Ford Mustang? It's probably one of the best cars America has to offer. And it's a pretty damn good way to wrap up this list. So the five best sports cars you can find under three grand. Comment down below your opinion. Like and share this video if you guys enjoyed it. And last, but certainly not least, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.